All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is May 21st, 2021, and we are in an exciting time. I got some more exciting information to share with you. As you will know by now, I'm not sure what the title is going to be, but I believe it'll be The First 50. You know, as I was going through and, and responding to comments in the last video, I I realized that there there wasn't a whole bunch of of this grasping of of the wowness of the 50. It's something we've been we've been seeking to understand in its timing for about two and a half years, probably right around two and a half years. Um, and so today I'm going to spend some time showing you guys this this understanding and why this why the where of this 50 day count is so important what the lord revealed and gave to us through the confirmation of the holy spirit last year to show us that it was correct i mean the whole thing we had put it on the back burner for a little bit because we we couldn't understand how it would equal that and we spoke about it a bit in the last video with these and those, right? Well, I'm going to go into that today a little later on and, and break it down a little bit more and give a little bit more direction as to how I see it. And not how I see the 50, 14, 50. We get it. But what will this 50 days entail and how will it end at the end of this 50? All right. Um. Many times we have seen, like in the past, even before the, the ministry began for me, and I know like probably just about all of you, or at least most of you, we believed that the 50 to Pentecost was 40 days of the Son of Man and then 10 more to uh, the Holy Ghost. And I've said, you know, and I used to believe that. For the longest time, I believed it. And then maybe about two years ago, we started to say, well, maybe, you know, we were looking at some things and and maybe what's going on is it's 10 days and then 40 to that 50th. But that wasn't really quite lining up either. Then we came to realize that we had this connection to the seven day wedding of Leah, the seven days that we see in the story of the ark, uh, 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 the story in in uh, the transfiguration of Luke, the about an eight days, that, that means almost the eighth year, but also means that he's returning at about the eighth day before that eighth year is beginning. And we also finally, just several months ago, we finally got the confirmation to understanding all of that, which was John chapter 20 and the Lord returning after eight days. I mean, it was it was perfect. So we understood that. So I'm going to go in and show you how I see that playing out so that especially new people get it. And and the people that are in the forum, uh, you know, there have been many questions as to how is this laid out, because not everybody sees it the same way. All right. A lot of the a lot of brothers and sisters, even within the ministry, we don't all agree on everything. We've got the keys and, and we're, we're going in and we're digging into these things. But. We're trying to, to pinpoint as, as best we can. And so I'm going to pinpoint the way I see those 50 days playing out based on the revelation of Scripture that we have. All right? So that's what we're going to go into. And before we get there, though, I'm going to share some more confirmations um, that are pretty wild. We're going to get into um, this guy's website that was shared by our sister Melissa over in the forum. So anybody that's wondering, you want to join the forum, come over here to ministryrevealed.com to the website, and you can go to the menu and join the forum. There's about 750 people some odd in there sharing all sorts of things. Well, our sister Melissa shared this guy's website. Now, this guy doesn't do a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, most of his stuff is research, and it's, it's mathematical things and connections and counts. I mean, not not whimsy, you know, just kind of this. No, 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 no. Very detailed stuff. Things I had never seen, things I had never caught before, but are in complete alignment with everything we teach. When you see these things, you're going to say, oh my goodness, 
over and over and over again, as well as the sun, moon, and stars. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It, it's so beautiful. It's literally 100% in line with the revelation. And this guy believes only that it's seven years. Okay, he doesn't understand. He, he understands what he's revealed, but he doesn't understand how it plays out over that whole 22 year and so forth. So when you guys see this, when you guys, when you guys see the, the guy's website, go send this guy emails, go to his YouTube channel and on his newest video, whichever, I don't know how old it is, on his newest video, go and send him comments to come and check out Ministry Reveals so we can connect with him. All right, he would be a great guy to really get more detail with. I'm going to show you things I'd never seen before, and they're awesome. And they're revealed on just a couple of things, maybe three or four things we were looking at on his website. It's amazing, but his website is packed. All right. So that's what we're going to get into. Um, to start off, like always, I like to tell everybody if you're new to this ministry, I know some people think, oh, why do you got to say this all the time? I have to say it because there are always new people. You know, in, in the last video, <laughs> I received some comments about people saying, no, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you know, sometimes I say, so do you get it? You see what I'm saying? And then I don't go in and explain it because my videos would be even longer sometimes, right? And But I have to remember that there's always some new people and newer people that may not have heard of certain things. So anybody that's new or newer and hasn't gone through this playlist, I am telling you, you are missing out. The very first things you need to watch is this, who the Gospels are speaking to. In the description box under the video, you can get the link to this printout, okay? The revelation of this intro video right here, this first 30-minute video, is the revelation, the final opening of the books, finally understanding who the Gospels are speaking to, okay? And it's, it's with the, it, the attention in it is to the end times. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to find out that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ, but he knows everybody's things. You're going to see that Mark is speaking to the left behind church in Israel. You're going to see that Matthew is speaking to Judah, to the Jews. And you're going to say, well, how did we miss all this? Because in the third video, you're going to understand that we've been taught from the book of Matthew all of our lives for century and century and for centuries. Our foundation has always been in the gospel of Matthew. And because it's been in the Gospel of Matthew, we've not understood properly who Mark and who Luke are speaking to. If we did, every single pastor on earth, I'll guarantee you, would have wanted to teach from Luke. Because Luke is speaking to the Bride of Christ. Luke is speaking to the pre-trib escape. This video number six will reveal that to you. But you must understand first the first video. And the second key is the 14 years. There's a big picture in all of this. It's like the book of Revelation, 22 chapters. It's like the Hebrew alphabet, 22 letters. It's, it, 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 you're going to see something today from his website. It's the menorah. 22, 777 seven, seven, and 1. It, it, it's the whole revelation. 777 seven, seven, and 1. This 14 that we're talking about, is the last two sevens to the Jubilee, which is 22, or if the first seven is gone, you would say 15. When you understand these two keys, I tell you, you're going to be so excited. You're going to see scripture in a light you had never before understood, but you've been wanting to seek forever. All right? That's how important these videos are. So watch the first one, the second one. The third one will explain why. Come down to the sixth one, and understand, you'll see for yourself, that the, the disputes and the, the debates on whether it's pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib will be revealed to you that it's all three. It's the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. It's the mid-trib rapture of the sleeping church now awake. And it's the return of the Lord feet down on the Mount of Olives. Pre, mid, post. All right? So... Let's continue from here. For anybody else that's new, when you go to the website, you can also get the book. So you can uh, you can go to Amazon. You can actually go in the description box under these videos. 
You can go to Amazon. You could buy the paperback. You can buy the ebook, or you can go to the website ministryrevealed.com. Do it all from there. And if you don't want to buy the book, you don't have to pay for the book. It's available for free in PDF form as well, and for free in uh, in audio. All right. So I always recommend the the book. Because we have so many testimonies of people that have given the book to other people, that have bought a pack of 10 or a dozen or more, and have given them out to people. And the stories we are getting back, the emails we're getting on it, is mind-blowing. It really is. And I everybody should have it. All right? Even if you get the PDF, I don't care. Just get it and share it with people. It's, it's going to change. It, it, it does change. The revelation of the end times. And you're going to see that today with even more confirmations. Oh, and before I forget, I just received a notification since the last video that people living in Australia can now get the book. So I don't know if maybe in Australia it took a long time with Amazon before. Maybe it took them a long, long time to get it. Um, but now Amazon has a factory for uh, book printing. And they say now books are available in Australia for uh, within two to three days uh, delivered. All right. So that's good news for everybody down in that neck of the woods. And I wanted to let you guys know, I was thinking of doing, um, not tomorrow, but on Sunday morning, I was thinking of doing a live show. I know a lot of our brothers and sisters overseas have been wanting to be a part of it. And we couldn't, they couldn't be a part of uh, the last one we did over here because it was later in the day. So... I'm thinking around between 11 or 12, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sunday morning to noon, right? From 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. my time, which is anywhere from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So, excuse me, those who are overseas, you can determine um, your count from there. So, 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all right? On this Sunday, so in a couple days from now. All right. Are you guys ready for this? We got some exciting, exciting stuff. Check this out. Our sister shared this. I don't know how she came across it, but this is what our sister Melissa had shared. This website is called 1260D.com. Okay, the guy's name is Dean Coombs. Well, check this out. There's all this talk, you know, I'm Canadian, but we know that Americans, it's generally, the focus Everywhere is always on America, right? Even around the world, the focus is America. That And the other focus is always Israel. So you got always Israel and America. But we tend to, to get zeroed in on those things all the time. But we know there's a period of time that isn't just one set of years, as we were talking about. We know there are two sets of years, right? We know there are two sets, the first seven of seals, and the second seven of trumpets. We've talked about these things before. We've shared them before. And there's something I hadn't seen before. Because our focus was on these events and, and looking at what, what was taking place in America. Well, check this out. This guy has a, a breakdown, a whole detailed breakdown. He Remember, remember. It, I don't know if he's some sort of mathematician as well or just studies these things, but he's got a lot of studies, guys. All right? I want to show you this. He shows about a total solar eclipse over Mecca and Medina from 2027 to 2034 in relation to these eclipses. You see this? See this X? One passes over Mecca. The other passes over Medina. And do you want to see where it is in 2027, you see this? Total solar eclipse, August 2nd, 2027. Hello. How many times have you guys in your studies or in your, I should say more so in your videos, when you watch people talking about it, they always say that the that the the, the crab, uh, what is that one? Uh, da, 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 da. But the, what's what's that? Shoot. Anyways, the crab. They always say that that is the sheepfold, right? That this is the sheepfold. That the rapture group, this is relating to the sheepfold. I've heard that over the years many, many, many times. Okay? There's a sister who goes into a lot of detail about it too. 
I think Sabine talked about it quite a bit. And it's the sheepfold. Okay? In 2027 in August. And the next one that cuts across, this time over Medina, is March 20th, 30, uh, 2034. Brothers and sisters, do you recognize these times? Do you recognize the fact that this is in the sheepfold in the right near the fall of 2027? Do you know what this lines up with? It lines up with our revelation we've been showing here forever. Check this out. The, the seven years of trumpets begins in the spring of, 2030, uh, of 2028. Six months earlier is what? Ta-da. Six months earlier is the rapture. Now, when we talk about these times, I don't say exactly this month to exactly. We know this time frame within give or take a couple months. So here you have the beginning of trumpets in spring of 2028. Go back six months. What's this going back six months to the rapture all about? What's this? See this? Look, See this little symbol? I have about fall of 2027. Why? Because you've got the six years of seals. They see the Lord hide us from the face of him that comes uh, uh, from the, him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb at the end of the sixth year of seals. Then what do we see in the beginning of the seventh year of seals? We see the 144,000 being sealed. And then we see the rapture of the church, the great multitude. When the rapture of the great multitude takes place, what do we see about the seventh seal? The seventh seal says about the space of half an hour, Paul said. I believe that reference of about half an hour, about a half period of time, relates to the year itself. I've been sharing it like that forever since the revelation of the 14 began. It is seven years of seals. The seventh year, when the Lord is there and, 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 and the, the, the mountain is being seen and things are being set up, right at the about six months, that five to six months in, after the six years of seals, 144,000 sealed, at about the fall of 2027 is where we've had the rapture for a long time now. And here is the sign in the sheepfold of a total solar eclipse in August 2027, the exact time frame of the rapture of the sleeping church now awake. That is pretty awesome. Do you see what else it said? Till 2034, March of 2034 is the next one that crosses over. Do you know that March, do you know what March 2034 is? March of 2034 is by spring of 2034 is when Jesus returns feet down on the Mount of Olives after the six years of trumpets are complete. Because in that final year, you guys remember, Jesus deals with the enemy in that final year. Do you remember that? This final year, this 21st or 14th year in the big picture compared to the tribulation of seals and trumpets. Remember, we're in the seven, what I call, quote unquote, easy years. We're waiting for this 50th to begin for the bride to go. And that's what we're going to talk about in a little bit. And then you've got the seven years of seals. See, six and the Lord returns. They're seeing them on heavenly Mount Zion coming down. Then you've got the seventh year Sabbath of rest, right? Or the seventh year Sabbath or the Shemitah year, and then you've got the six of trumpets and the Shemitah year. This is when the Lord deals with the enemy and defeats the enemy and everything else. See? So when is that? Look at when he comes. When did we have the Lord coming? At the end of the 13th year, beginning of the 14th. When is that, brothers and sisters? The spring of 2034. When the Lord will return feet down on the Mount of Olives in the spring of 2034. And it so happens that we've got this event 
at the spring of 2034. Just like we did for the rapture. That means this is like six, what? Six and a half months. I'm sorry, six and a half years. It's perfect. From the Lord coming at the rapture for these guys to the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. And at the rapture, they're in the sheepfold. This is pretty awesome. I was getting excited, seeing, excited watching this or reading this. Because he then goes on to say, you can see the symbolism. He goes into a lot of detail, but I'm going to show you something else. He says, he says, uh, the Zora strain calendar of Iran is a 360 day calendar in modern times. Five or six days are added at the end of their 360 day year. So that the first day of the year occurs on the spring equinox. However, 360 calendar that God revealed to me resets itself again in spring of 2035, one year later. Well, isn't that interesting? Because when the Lord fulfills this final year, when it's all over, it's the spring of 2035 and the beginning of the Jubilee year, the 22 or the 15. This gets way better, brothers and sisters, way better. I followed a link and he gives a possible scenario, but you must understand in his possible scenario, don't get confused. When you go and research and look into things into his website, do not stray from the revelation you already know. We understand the 6,000. We understand the 7,000. We understand the 21, 22 years, the, the 14, 15th year, which is the same thing, just minus the first seven. We've revealed all of these things, brothers and sisters. So don't get, don't get sidetracked because of a seven-year count. Okay? We understand the proper count. And this is why we want to reach out to this guy to understand, uh, to show him even greater revelation as he's helping confirm for us. Okay? Listen to this. From creation, 3960. So he's got approximately 3960 for creation. Do you know why that's awesome? Do you guys remember the last video we just we did a couple videos ago, I mean? I did a quick calculation just briefly, and I came to the year 3965. Why did we do this? Because we showed the beginning, the ox, the bull, the alpha of the omega, alpha and omega, the beginning of the end to be just like the beginning. Spring equinox was in the bull. And I showed you guys at 3965. That's awesome. Because he goes into his chart and he believes it was right around 3960. So he does this calculation from the start to 960 <coughs> in relation to Solomon's temple. And he gives us a calculation of 3,000 years. From Solomon's temple to 34 AD, the second 3,000 years. Well, watch this. As you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, he has one more year. So you got 6,000, and there's still going to be, we know, uh, uh, the one more thousand. Okay, here's the other thousand. The thousand year of reign of Christ. He thinks it's going to overlap with the three and a half years of a portion of tribulation. We know that's not true. It's because, guys, <laughs> this is, I'm so excited by this because... It is such incredible confirmation because what he hasn't understood is, is because he doesn't understand the 14-year revelation or the, the big picture 21, 22, or, or the seven easy gone and then 14 and the, and the 15th as the Jubilee being the same, he doesn't see it. And so he has things that overlap like the three and a half years of Christ. We know the first three and a half years of trumpets is the Lord here on Mount Zion while they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets? So you see, he's he he's seeing things, but he can't he can't discern where to put them because he doesn't understand the complete picture yet. But he knows it's there. And look at where he has the reign of Christ. From April 2035 
to March of 3035, the thousand year reign of Christ. Well, wait a second. Didn't he just say it was March of 2034? Yet he has one more year in there. And he calls it the one from, from Revelation 9.15, the, those that were prepared for a year and a month and a week and a day such as this. He doesn't understand what that's talking about. and But he knows the revelation of 21 and the 22nd year Jubilee. And he's got this additional year. So from 2034, he goes from 2034 into 2035. He's got one more year. And do you know what? Isn't that incredible? It's exactly what we have here. It's the exact same story. I so pray that we can get this guy, that we can get a hold of him and go through so many more and just piece this together in the last little bit of time we have left. Because when we get going and I start showing you this stuff and, and this, this revelation and this, this final connection, I believe, to the 50 days, you guys are going to understand. We don't have much time left to keep talking and, and, and to keep reaching out to people. We got to do everything we can now. You see, 6,000, right where we said, one more year, just like we said. Then the millennial reign of Christ, just like we showed. I Man, I was so excited. I thought this was just incredible. I couldn't believe this lined up the exact, exactly to our count. Exactly. Amazing, amazing stuff. Let me show you something else that's fascinating. This was awesome. Check this out. <clears throat> You see here, it's called, well, there's another place here too. So the numerator is 21 plus 1. Do you see what he calls it? 3W plus 1. Each, each W represents a week. What he does, though, is he's trying to discern it, and he thinks it's splitting them up. Well, we know that there is a 3.5 and, and a 3.5. But there's not just that one three and a half and three and a half of the end, right? This is just relating to trumpets, the time of the Son of Man uh, of the Lord here on Mount Zion. Then three and a half years to the end of trumpets, but the Lord returns after two and a half when Satan had his reign. But there's still a seven that comes before that, right? There's a seven that comes before that, which is seals. <laughs> it, it's oh man, it's so awesome. Here it is, right here. Well, watch this. I had never seen this before. Hidden weeks in Pentecost. He, like I said, mathematician. Guys, look at this. <laughs> I couldn't keep with this guy. All right? I, I don't know what all of that means. It, to me, it's mumbo jumbo. I don't get it all. But there's one thing I got right away when I saw it. Check it out. Seven plus seven plus seven plus one. What is that, brothers and sisters? The easy seven years of Jacob and for Leah expecting Rachel that we've been talking about forever. The seven years of seals, the seven years of trumpets, and the final one of Jubilee. It's what we've been teaching. It's what we've been teaching. It's in the menorah. Do you know what he's talking about? The almond blossoms. I had no idea. I had never seen this before. I had never studied the, the number of almond blossoms. The number of almond blossoms are seven, 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 and one. Hello. Does that ring a bell to anybody? How about this? <laughs> We've had this for like three years as well. The whole story of the end times is 22 years. They are the final seven, seven, seven. And one. <laughs> I'm so excited, man. This stuff is, you don't know what it means to me to find confirmations like this revealed in, in numbers from God's words and designs within his word and what it reveals in creation, what, it's, what it is, is, has in the sun, moon, and stars. It's confirming everything, guys. It's confirming everything. 
<laughs> it's so awesome. And do you know what's fascinating about the 777? It starts with Pentecost. <laughs> How about that? The first one is always the Pentecost one. It always points back to the middle. You see? There they're going this way. There they're going this way. Here are the Pentecost ones. And if you guys remember this, a video I did a long time ago. In fact, so long ago, it was like three years ago. So three years and change. So way back in the early days. Watch this. It's only got 500 and some odd views. I still couldn't believe it's got so few. Watch this. Right here. I called this video, Who Has Who? It's only got 500 and some odd views. It's called Who Has Who? And what I reveal in this video is just like Eleazar, okay? The Holy Spirit has been sent out to wake up the bride. The Holy Spirit has been sent out and is waking up and is gathering the bride to bring to the Messiah, to bring to the Son, okay? And then the time of seals, when the time of seals are over, so if we look at it on the on the on the main chart, the Holy Spirit went out, you could say went out and has been working really hard for these past seven years. When the seven years are over, the Holy Spirit is going out again, remember? At the end of the 50 days, the Holy Spirit is going to go out at true Pentecost and is going to anoint the Acts 2.0 that will begin the next seven years. And when these seven years are over, the Holy Ghost is going to go out again and anoint that group, which is like the 144. And it's going to go to the end. And when this seven is over, what happens? The Holy Ghost goes out and never returns again. But in that video, I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about there in a second. I'll show it with scripture. But when this portion is done for the Holy Spirit, in that video, what I was sharing is this is the seven where the Holy Spirit is working for the bride. This is the seven during the time of Christ. You see, what's going to happen here? When this time is over, it's the rapture when Jesus comes. On Mount Zion, not feet down on the Mount of Olives, but in the cloud on heavenly Mount Zion. Then who's the work in trumpets? Judah. It's God's people. So you've got the Gentile bride, you've got Israel, the sleeping church, and you've got trumpets. Who did Jesus come for? Jesus came for the lost sheep, the 10 tribes. Okay? Who, who, is, who are God's people? Judah. So that video was about the Holy Spirit for the bride, Jesus for the lost sheep, and God the Father for his people, Judah. Okay? That's what that video is about. It's like over three years ago. So it was a long time. But now let me show you what I'm getting at in relation to the Holy Ghost. And here's what we're talking about again. Holy Ghost. So there's seven years starting with Pentecost. Seven years starts with Pentecost. Seven years starts with Pentecost. So this first seven years, beginning with the Holy Ghost, that's what we're in right now. When these seven years come to an end, the bride is gone, the bride is taken, and you have the 50 days of Pentecost to the Holy Ghost with the Holy Ghost. Okay? When the seven years of seals are over, does the dove go out again? And when the seven years of trumpets are over, does the dove go out again and then never have to come back? Right? Never have to return to heaven, but we'll stay? Well, how about that? That's exactly what we have, isn't it? Here's the whole story, remember? This is the revelation we have of the of uh, uh, Noah and the ark. The 40 days of the Son of Man. We're going to go into detail of this a little bit more as well. When we get more into that 50 that's coming. When the 40 days of the Son of Man are over. The raven antichrist spirit is going to be sent out. Then the dove is also going to be sent out. I'm going to show you how I believe this count is when we get to that in a moment. Here's that dove going out. 
which which dove is this going out? Okay, the dove goes out, finds no place for her feet. What do we know this is? This is the 50 days that we're talking about this year. At true Pentecost, when the dove is sent out and empowers that group of disciples and apostles that are going to be there, that are going to work during the time of seals with powers like the Lord had. We call that Acts 2.0. Okay, so which dove would this be? This one right here. So you got this. This is the easy seven years we were talking about. The Holy Spirit's been working, bringing up, bringing in the bride for the first seven years. This is seals right here. When is seals going to begin? At Pentecost. Right? The Holy Ghost comes, gives them that anointing that I'm just showing you now in, in, um, in Genesis 8. And it's the seven years of, tribu of tribulation of seals beginning. When the seven years of tribulation of seals is over, what happens? Okay, the dove had come, the dove leaves, tribulation, the word stayed, remember it means tribulation. The dove waits seven years or seven days, the type and shadow is years, and then what happens? The dove goes out again. The dove goes out again. So now where would that be? That would be right here. Here's the dove going out again for right before the seven years of trumpets. There's the dove going out. It's relating to that rapture group. And then what happens? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think I confused you. This is the first seven. Let me, sorry, 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 sorry. This is where we are right now. We're in these seven coming right to the tail end. When this is done, this Holy Ghost right here is the beginning. Okay? Is this Holy Ghost right here. When the Holy Ghost does the Acts 2.0, that Holy Ghost leaves. And it's the seven years as days here, as years for seals. When the seven days as years of seals are over, the dove goes out again. Okay? Now the seven years are over. There's the dove again. The dove goes out again at the end of seals. There he is at the end of seals. And it's the rapture group. Then what happens? Then the dove leaves again for seven more days or seven more years. There's the seven years of trumpets that started with the dove at the beginning. There's your seven years of trumpets. And when the seven years of trumpets, what happens? There's the dove one more time. And what do we see? Seven more years, which are the trumpet years. And then the dove goes out one more time and never returns again. Why? Because it's going to be the 6,000th and first year. The 14 years are over. It's revealed, guys, in the menorah. It all points to the middle, to the middle stem. It is all about Pentecost. It is the revelation that we received in this ministry. You guys remember that? I'm not going to go into all of it. You guys got this confirmation we talked about with Jodell so many times. She said it was at the 50-minute mark of that video, and the Holy Spirit told her to tell me right on target. And that was my prayer. That was in my, in my prayers to the Lord that nobody on earth knew. And what was it about? This video right here. I said, Lord, this video was on March 10th, 2020. And I said, Lord, I just realized what I told these people. That after the 50, after the 50th, tribulation begins. And I said this year, because I thought it related to last year with the count that we had. After the 50th, tribulation begins. And I told the Lord, if I do not, I was adamant. If I do not get a confirmation, I'm going to take this video down, Lord. And literally. Just, what, less than an hour later, I received this email, but I didn't see it till about one in the morning. This was just an hour after I was praying to the Lord. And I said, Lord, if I have understood, then tonight or no later than tomorrow morning, I want you to show me with the number 50 that will catch my attention and let me know that I have understood, that I was on track, that I'm on target and knowing 
what you're showing me. And she literally says the Holy Spirit told her, and she put it in brackets, to give me the words right on target. You guys all know the story. It just blew me away. And of course, I had to leave that video. That video was what we were talking about even a little bit in the recent one. Because it was the revelation of the, four, of the 50, 14, 50. Meaning God's name as Noon is one of his names. Noon is the number four, is the 14th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And the 14th letter in the Hebrew alphabet equals the number in the Jewish, in the Jewish count to 50. So 14 equals 50. Well, then we realize, well, wait a second. There's a 50-day count and there's a 50-year count. The revelation of this video was the revelation that it was the 50 days. And when the 50 days are over, the following day will begin the tribulation of the 14 years. And when those 14 years are over, it will be the final jubilee. You see, it's 14 years. It will start with a 50. It will end with a 50. And it just so happens there are two 50s in Scripture. One is the day count. One is the year count. This count is a count from creation. This count is, is a count from Christ, you could say more, more, more accurately. Okay, It's to the end of the 6,000 years. When the Lord returns here, it's the 6,000th. He's going to fulfill this 6,000th. And this will be that 6,000th and first. You following? This is the revelation. 50 days, 14 years, 50th year jubilee. The big picture is 21, 777, and 1 for the 22nd year. Check this out. This calculation of 777 and 1, which is divided by the seven flames, right? Or seven candlesticks, seven almond blossoms on each set within seven flames on the seven top of the candlesticks. So you've got 22 divided by seven. Do you want to see how it's in all creation, brothers and sisters? I had never seen this. I had never heard of this in my life. It's the most simple calculation to the revelation of everything. Look at that. The answer is pi. Brothers and sisters, it's over. We've understood. It is seven, 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 and one. It is Jacob in the first seven, quote unquote, easy years or fast passing years because he was so excited working for his bride. That's the time of the Holy Ghost working for us from when the Holy Ghost came first and is working for the first seven to bring in the bride. When the bride is brought in, the next seven will begin after the 50 and the Holy Ghost comes and the seven begins. That is the revelation. It lines up with Genesis. It lines up with the menorah. It lines up with everything in creation, with pi. <laughs> what, it, it, it's everywhere. It's so awesome. I was so excited putting this one together, guys. <laughs> I've been really excited lately, of course, right? Just like this last one. Because we've been revealed things that for some reason, the Lord has decided to use our ministry to do. I don't know why. I don't know what to tell you. But we've been proving it over and over and over and over and over again for three and a half years. Have we been wrong on which date until now? Yes. But was it done with understanding of Scripture? Yes, we were, we were revealing watch dates because of Scripture being revealed. But you all know what we understand now. We understand that this count is at the end of the count. 
the Lord returns at the end of 2,000 years, which is right at that spring of 2034, because he was born in 33, uh, he was crucified in 33 AD. The year had already begun. He's coming at the end of that 2,000 years. And when he comes in this spring of 34, he's going to fulfill that final year, remember? This, this isn't a mystery to us. Zechariah chapter 14. You see, what is he going to do in this final year? Th this is something that the other brother doesn't understand yet either. It it's almost like there's this count that continues. How does it work? You know, he, he thinks there's three and a half years. We, we have it. It's the revelation of the open books. It's the revelation of the open books, who the Gospels are speaking to. The 14 years in within the 21 year. Remember the open books, brothers and sisters. Zechariah is speaking to the Jews. Hosea is speaking to the Gentiles. They're both 14 chapters. The only two books of 14 chapters in the entire Bible. One is to Judah. One is to Gentile. Hello. It's for a reason. And what have we been showing in the beginning of the 14th chapter? What's the beginning of the 14th chapter? It's the beginning of the final year, the 14th year. What happens in this 14th year? The Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. There's going to be a great earthquake. It's going to cleave in two. And what's he going to do? He's going to destroy all of them that came against Jerusalem. This is what's going to take place in that final year. You see, this was, this was also part of that entire revelation that back in, in August, I believe it was, when I was first really upset that in August of 2019, I, w I threw my hands in the air and I was like, Lord, this is it. I can't do this anymore. You need to let me know. Because what had happened? Do you guys remember? For those that have been around for a little while, <coughs> do you remember Zechariah chapter 1 to Zechariah chapter 7? We had been teaching on it forever. From Zechariah, if 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 Jeremiah, uh, if Zechariah is the 14 years, which it is, then Lord, what had we missed? Because we thought from 18, right, 2018, maybe to 2019, was the true 70th year of Israel. And if it was the true 70th year of Israel, and Zechariah chapter 7 told us, are you ready for this? Especially new people. See, 14 years. Starts with these 70 years. Look at this. In chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 12, it says, How long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which, which you have had indignation these 70 years? That means current 70 years when is going to be then followed by destruction. Okay? You go to chapter 7, which would be the seventh year. Okay, the seventh year Shemitah. This is the seventh year time frame of the seventh seal year time frame. Okay, it's this year right here. <clears throat> All right, that's what it's talking to. And when and how can we prove? We've proved it so many ways. You come to chapter eight and it's the Lord now there on Zion. Let your hands be strong and they're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets and the temple. Well, that's exactly what happens at the beginning of trumpets with the Lord here on Mount Zion, and they're going to start rebuilding the city, streets, and temple. We've proven why they can't build it for the first seven years, and that's because they've desecrated the land since they had Jerusalem. They've never observed a Sabbath year, a Shemitah year, in the 50 years that they had it. So the Lord cannot build on it. We're here, guys. Whew. We're here. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. And this is why back in 2000, let me sip of coffee. This is why back in 2019, 
We've been talking about it in 2000, since about April of 2018 when it began to come to be revealed to us, Zechariah and Hosea. All right. And in 2019, when the fifth month came and went, the fasting and the mourning of the fifth month is the ninth of Av. So in August of 2019, when this day came and went on the Hebrew calendar, I threw my hands up. I cried out to the Lord and I said, this is it. How can I continue if this has already passed? And that night, that moment in the shower, I received, I didn't hear an audible, I had no dream, no vision. I just instantly got the thought into my mind, just dropped in my mind, 13th to the 14th year. And I was like, what? And as soon as I said, what? I wasn't quite, what do you mean, 13 to 14 years? I suddenly started recalling everything. That Abraham had Ishmael when he was 86. God made a covenant when he was 13 years later. When Ishmael's 13, Abraham is 99. And boom, at the start of the 14th year when he's 100, Jesus, uh, uh, Isaac is born. I realized in the story of Jacob, when the, when the 20 years of the story of Jacob came to an end, he made a, dec a, a covenant with his father-in-law, just like Abraham after 13, just like Jacob after 20. And then I remember Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, it was seven weeks or seven years. Then three and a half of rebuilding the city and streets. Then the two and a half. And then the final week, the one week was the final year. And then we go to the we go to trumpets. And in the in the book of Revelation, it was at the end of the sixth trumpet. The Lord has come down, feet down on the Mount of Olives, because there's a great earthquake. And there he is at the start of the seventh trumpet. It says everything above and on earth, and everything is now his. He's here at the seventh trumpet, at the start of the seventh year, or at the end of the thirteenth year. And then I, I started recalling all of these places. It showed it. And then I was recalled Zechariah, 13 years of Zechariah. And what happens at the 14th? Right at the beginning of the 14th, the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. And I said, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The revelation wasn't that it was only 14 years or the big picture 20 it was that the Lord returns and fulfills the final year, destroying all who came against Jerusalem. He will deal with in that final year. From spring of 30, 2034 to the spring of 2035 is when he's going to deal with all this. So then came the question, well, how does this equal 70 years then? 70 years will have passed. And then last year from, or then from, uh, from, uh, what was it? Uh, it was right around that same time in 2019, right around that time when the Lord gave that, I then said, well, what about the 70th year of Israel? And then I thought, well, it, I knew it wasn't their true 70th. So then we thought it related to when they would also have a government because they only had a provisional government. So in August of 2019, I then explained how they had the land and they had the people, but they didn't yet have an official government until March of 20 uh, of 1949. So that meant we had until the end of that 70th, which would have been March 11th, 2020, the official first day to the end of this true 70 years. And that's where we were looking for the escape. The world would change and that would be where the escape was. And what happened on that day? Bang, the world changed. March 11th was the day they declared the global pandemic on the date that I said, not the global pandemic, but that the world would change. We thought escape, of course. So then what would happen is this was kind of going to the wayside. We started saying, well, wait a second. 
if Zechariah chapter 7 says that for 70 years, you see, this one says, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, it's talking about for the 70 years you did it back here. We said, well, wait a second. Uh, now that's passed again. Now what? Now what are we missing, Lord? It's now 2020. It's the fall of 2020. Lord, what? I thought that was the 70th. How can we reach this? And we had the revelation of what? We got the next piece. Remember the, the, the story, the picture of time, the 70 years? How many Sabbaths there were since Christ? And we got the picture, we got the revelation that the 777, the final three, and following every Shemitah year back revealed a piece of understanding for us. And that was three years that had to be added when they came into the land. That brought us to to Leviticus chapter 19. Let's go to that real quick. In Leviticus chapter 19, for those that are newer, you say, well, there's one piece missing. Israel is already past 70 years old. No, they haven't. You see, for one thing, the Lord God isn't counting from the day they became 70. Okay? The Lord God isn't even counting from the, the day from that day they turned 70 and adding three years. He's counting from Pentecost. This is what the revelation was in, in March of last year with Jodel. This was what that video was about. After the 50th tribulation begins. It's, it's the reason we're going to go into this 50 and I'm going to break it down and show you what it was. It's not till after the Holy Ghost comes, leaves that next day, boom, that's the beginning of tribulation. So they have to have their birthday before that and the anniversary has to be before the 50 days and the and the true time of tribulation beginning. But here's what happened. We say, well, how could it be? I mean, they, they're, they're going to be celebrating their 73rd. And of course, they just turned 73, didn't they, on May 14th? Well, look at what Leviticus 19 says. When you shall come into the land. Well, when did they come into the land? Spring of 1948, right? May 14th, 1948. So for three years, what would be three years? 48 into 49, 49 into 50, 50 into 51. There's three years. So that means they're in their 70th, and they were in their 70th until May 14th, 2021. So now they've, they've completed 70 true years. And this did not relate to Jerusalem, by the way. This was all trees. This is Israel. Now, people have been asking me lately in comments, what about the fig tree generation? You see, all the trees relates to Israel. But the fig tree in Luke 13 is the story of the fig tree for three years I've been coming and it's not bared fruit. And the, the vine dresser says, give it one more year. Let me dung it for one more year. What is the fig tree? This does not say all the trees. This one is the fig tree. It's three years plus a year for four years. And Jerusalem came in when they took over Jerusalem in 1967. They took over Jerusalem in 1967. And on the Jewish calendar, that date this year was also May 14th on the Hebrew calendar. Okay? What was that? 1967. So 67 to 68, 68 to 69, 69 to 70, 70 to 71. So the spring of 2021 is also the four years of Jerusalem. So we've got both the end of the 70 and the end of the true 50, both in May of 2021. And this was why Luke, in chapter 21, told us 
which is the story is different. The, the lesson of the fig tree is way different than Mark's and then Matthew's. And in Luke's, he says, behold, the fig tree. I just showed you that's the Jerusalem one, right? And all the trees. That's the Israel one. So the fig tree and all the trees, both of them equal the fall of 2020. Uh, sorry, the spring of 2021. You see, and you know for yourselves that summer is near at hand. And when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is at hand. This is where we are. This is where we're at. So, <clears throat> are you following? This is why when I was crying out to the Lord and, and these, these little nuggets were being dropped and these little pieces of revelation were being dropped, the revelation came to be. We understood when Christ was crucified. We understood his resurrection time. We had the revelation of when the bride would go also at resurrection day, just like Christ. And we understood it because of the feast of first fruits of the feast of weeks and when it's to be observed you see so this became a, a big issue we were looking at this and saying well back in zechariah 7 here and we we're saying well wait a second if zechariah 7 said when everything's past tense when you fasted when you mourned in the fifth and seventh month even those 70 years See, it goes on to say in verse 7, by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity. Are they still in prosperity? Have they been in prosperity for the seven plus three years? For the 50 plus four years? Yes, they have. And the cities thereof round about, when men inhabited the, the south and the, and the plain, everything is past tense. The past tense of those 70 which meant, which is something we've been talking about, like I said, since 2018, which meant they could not observe the fasting of the fifth month, the fasting in the morning of the fifth month in the 71st year. So you can understand why we were distraught or why I was distraught back then. Because I understood the revelations. We've had the open books. We understood the gospels, the 14, 21. There was something that needed to be understood still here. And you know what? We got it. Now we have the understanding. <clears throat> this is what we were sharing recently. Okay? This, is, this was the purpose of these last couple of videos. In particular, this one in relation to the ox. Because when you go back to the beginning, when you go back to Adam at creation, Adam was uh, um, uh, uh, the spring equinox was at the ox. So if the beginning reveals the end and the beginning of the end is the ox, then what if we considered after having looked at Passover and Resurrection Day, in Pisces, which it is not, after having looked at it in uh, in uh, 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 um, in Aries, which it was with Christ, and it wasn't for this year, then what about going back to the beginning? And just like Christ, when he was crucified, he was on the cross at the full moon. So we know that it's going to come. This is the time frame we're looking at right here from Jerusalem time, okay? He was taken, he, he had his Passover meal. They went up to the mountain to pray. He's there and he's a stone's throw away, he says. Remember that. We've shared that a lot lately. Then he's taken into the hands of sinful men. He's beaten and ridiculed. Then he's brought in the morning. He's brought to Pilate in them. He's crucified. It's now 2 p.m., 2 p.m. in Israel at the full moon, okay? In Jerusalem at the full flower moon, 2.13 p.m., Christ is on the cross, okay? 
He's about to be dead. He's going to be taken down as the type and shadow from what was. He's got to be in before sunset. Then you have the 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 uh, 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 um, the Sabbath day. Remember, they're off by one day. We've shown that already. This is the Sabbath day. They couldn't go in. They they had to go and prepare and wait till the day was over. And then what happens? They didn't come in the evening. They came very early in the morning. Okay? They came very early in the morning in Jerusalem on the 28th. Is the resurrection day based off of the ox. When we took the 28th, the bride is gone. We know that John 28 tells us that the Lord then came and he was here until evening. Okay? But what happened when we took the 28th? And we said, okay, May 28th, the bride is gone. And then from the evening, the 50-day count will begin. That's when resurrection day, that is when the, the count to Pentecost starts. The 50 days that we've been looking for. We shared that in the recent video. I was surprised not to get more people talking about the wowness of this 50-day count. I was expecting so many more to, to be talking about it. But I think we've got a lot, lot more newer subscribers than we did when we were talking about it a lot in relation to the book of Zechariah. All right, because we haven't focused too much on that portion of Zechariah for a while. So for one thing, what I didn't mention in the last video is July 17th on the Gregorian, on our Gentile calendar, it's 717. That's pretty interesting too. We've had talks about 717 in this ministry. Many others have had 717 events and 717 talks. Okay, we know that 717 relating to the Ark all right, 727 comes from 717. In fact, let's go look at this real quick. Watch this. Let's go to the word for the ark is 727, okay? Now, this is the word for the ark, but you see it comes from the root word 717, which means to pluck or gather or pluck. This word is only used twice. One is to gather. P.S. This is the escape of the Gentile bride. This is the pre-trib in the gather. The second one is pluck. This is the rapture. As you guys saw the definition in, in uh, Genesis chapter 8, when the dove comes the second time, has the, the branch plucked in its mouth. This is the rapture one. So 717 is very, very important to many people, and it should be for us. Well, it just so happens that this year, it's not only the 50th day of the dove, it's also our gathering, as in the Song of Solomon, okay? It's our 717, but watch this. It gets much better. Okay? This is our 717. That's the 50 days. So what is 717? It's July 17th. So 717 for the Gentiles. Because it's the gathering for the Gentiles, you see? But what's the next day? It's the 9th of Av. Meaning from evening to evening. This is the ninth of Av from here to here is the ninth of Av. Do you, under, do you understand what I'm getting at in relation to this video? After the 50th, the tribulation begins. This year. I said that last year. It's this year now. If the answer is 50, 14, 50... And we got it confirmed directly by the Holy Spirit without a shadow of a doubt, with absolute 100% truth and certainty. Then this was correct. That was the whole purpose of it. So if after the 50th tribulation begins, and we know that Luke tells us when they're all surrounded, 
when they're all surrounded, right, in Luke's discourse, he says, but first, meaning but first before the tribulation of war against all the nations against each other, he says, you're going to see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. The bride is? No, that worker group that's going to be there waiting. That worker group is going to see Jerusalem surrounded. No attack yet, only surrounded. Do you know why there's no attack yet? Because the Lord won't be here during it, and the attack doesn't come during that period. The attack comes after the 50 days. See, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Jerusalem, this isn't all Israel. This is the Jerusalem portion. This is them being now removed from the land. Why are they going to be removed from the land? I told you just a little earlier. Because for the 50 years they've had Jerusalem. They've been disobedient and they hadn't been, they hadn't observed the Shemitah year. So for seven years, it's got to remain vacant. It's got to be destroyed. So that when he returns to build on it, the land will have had its rest. You see, so at the end of 50, at the end of 50, the 14 years begins. At the end of 50, the 14 years begins. And if Jerusalem was being surrounded during this period of time, when the 50th is over and the Holy Ghost dove as Acts 2.0 will have come and given them that supernatural anointing, when the dove leaves... When the dove leaves, tribulation begins. You see how important that is? The ninth of Av, brothers and sisters. Do you guys know how important the ninth of Av is to the Jews? This fasting and mourning that it does? The ninth of Av is the time when the spies returned with a bad report. Do you know why that's important? Notice how it's 13 and 1313 BCE, they call it. Do you know why that's important? Well, do you remember in the book of Numbers in the previous video, we showed how chapter 13 in 1313 BC, in chapter 13, when the spies go out to give a report, hello, and they come back and give a bad report, Okay, that was the ninth of Av. Both temples were destroyed. Jerusalem was attacked and destroyed, both on the ninth of Av. The battle of Batar was lost on the ninth of Av. And if you guys remember that one, how many times have we spoken about this? This is that uh, 132 to 136 CE. Do you remember this guy? Simon, Simon Barcoba, we spoke about that. Do you know who was involved with that? Remember these guys in relation to the 14ers, the original 14ers? That controversy that came about and it related to this portion of time with Smyrna. It's all connected. Ninth of Av. Romans plowed the Bet Hamidak, Ham, Hamikda on the 9th of Av. The Jews were exiled from England on the 9th of Av. Jews were banished from Spain on the 9th of Av. Both world wars began. And it's not that they both began at, this, at the same time. It says, are you ready for just one more? That's interesting because that'll be World War Three. World War II uh, and the Holocaust, historians conclude, and if you study this, you'll find out for yourselves, was actually the long drawn out conclusion of World War I. So what happened is World War I essentially wasn't done and World War II was, was the culmination, the completeness, the finishing of it, okay? World War I that began in 1914 and yes, amazingly enough, Germany declared war on Russia and it was the 9th of Av. Guys, the 9th of Av is what we've been seeking and searching in our understanding in this ministry for a long time 
that they would not observe the fasting and mourning at the fifth month, which is the ninth of Av. I just shared with you that they are now finished observing the true 70th year with the conclusion of the three plus 70 with the four plus 50 and that it tells us and has told us and we have understood it for the longest time that they would not observe this day ever again as a fasting and mourning. And for the first time ever, we have the revelation where the 50 days ends with the supernatural Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost leaves, the 14 years and the attack on Jerusalem happens. Do you understand this? Let me show you in uh, Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, sorry, in Zechariah chapter 8. In Zechariah chapter 8, listen to what it then says. We know they're going to, you know, let your hands be strong. The Lord is there on Zion. They're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets. Listen to what it says down here. In verse 9, starting in Zechariah 8, verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth month shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts therefore love the truth and peace hello do you realize this is all prophetic because they still mourn and fast on the fifth and on the seventh and so on and so forth this is prophetic so the following year in relation to the Lord now being on Mount Zion at the beginning of trumpets, he's saying to them, you will no longer mourn in any of these months anymore because they will all be turned to joy. But back in the year before, it said, when you were doing it, starting from the fifth, back up to the 70th year. You see why we're so excited? You see why I'm so excited about this? This is it. In my scriptural revealed revelation of the end of days, this is it. We've got it. It's been understood. How appropriate that our count is also going to begin at a blood moon. At a full moon, super blood flower moon. Do you understand how fascinating this is? That <clears throat> the Lord God, using it from the beginning count, being in the ox, P.S., which the Chinese, I found out, it is the year of the ox. So how appropriate is that as well? So in the year of the ox for them, at the count of the ox, in the, in the confirmation that I received, which was right on target, means bullseye, when the sun is in the other eye of the bull, and the other eye being the whole Aldebaran. You following? That right now, at this time, we're being revealed this, and it equals the day of the 50th, and the next day, the beginning of the 14 years on their attack day. Guys, for those who haven't been along for a long time, you're going to think, okay, you okay, I get it, I get it. But this has been a big deal. This has been a huge deal for this ministry for almost three years, or for about three years now. A really big deal. And the only way it makes it so is if this year, after the revelation of the 70 plus 3, after the revelation of the 50 plus 4, in all of this time, and the revelation that he returns after 13 to fulfill the 14th, and that when he returns, it's the 6,000th, he'll fulfill it, and then it's the 6,001st, the Jubilee. All of these things equal this year 
in this time. Because if this comes to pass, forget about it. Forget about it. But it's all true, brothers and sisters. You see, here's an example. <clears throat> you guys may have seen uh, uh, um, Amir Safari, right? Uh, XIDF. Uh, he's a pastor, big following, right? Him with, uh, he's good friends with Jack Hibbs. We've seen uh, Israeli News Live and the coming cyber attack he was talking about. But he was talking about how um, uh, uh, this was shared with us in the forum as well. How they know there, there's this planned attack. So these guys will say, well, Hamas is in on it and Israel is in on it. And all these higher ups are really in on it. And that's why they're funding them and doing all these things. Well, you guys remember, we know this too, don't we? This was the video given to us with that word from the Holy Spirit to confirm we've understood. We know there's a planned attack on Israel. Everybody is aware that there is going to be an attack on Israel. Right? They think around, it'll either be like with Tel Aviv and maybe down south. But do you know what none of these guys talk about? None of them believe it. None of them can understand that it's coming. Oh, sure, Israel, they can see that one. But they have no idea what Luke chapter 21 or what Zechariah chapter 1 is telling them. They have no idea. They do not believe Jerusalem is going to be attacked and so attacked and so decimated that the Jews are going to flee into all the countries. Just as Zechariah one, uh, Zechariah chapter 1 has told us, just as Luke chapter 21 told us, none of them are talking about it. Because the Jews have this sense that because God is on their side, it will never happen. We're too strong, he says. We can defeat any of them because we're so brilliant in our tactics. But God, brother, but God. Why? Because they have been disobedient. I'm not talking about Amir Safari. I'm talking about the, the Jews in general. They have been disobedient to what the Lord God gave them. And he has given them ample time to correct. And they will not correct themselves. And so what's coming? destruction. It will be another ninth of Av devastation. And who is this ninth of Av coming from? You guys remember that one, right? Who is this ninth of Av coming from? From 2 Chronicles chapter 24. See, it's going to come from Syria. And it came to pass at the end of the year. Do you know why it's the end of the year, brothers and sisters? Because the Lord God is counting from Pentecost to Pentecost. It's the whole revelation of, of the ministry. It's why the final 50 days are in the seventh year. They're in the tail end, the last little bit of the seventh year. They're not part of the next seven. They're not part of the start of the first year in the 14. They're the end of the seventh. And when the tribulation begins, Pentecost takes place. The Holy Ghost comes and goes, and the 14 years begins. This end of the year, this whole understanding is day one after Pentecost. And the revelation I just showed you is day one is the ninth of Av. The attack on Israel? No, the attack on Jerusalem. This attack on Jerusalem is what will remove them from the land for the next seven years. You see, we see it right here. When Syria, and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all. We'll go back to Zechariah chapter 1. What did I just show you at the, end of the, at the end of the chapter? Judah and Jerusalem destroyed and scattered. And sent all the spoil unto Damascus. 
For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, and the Lord delivered a great host into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. You see, they're all high and mighty thinking that, no, we got this, the Lord, Father's on our side, God's on our side. Oh, you're still his people, but he's going to punish you first because you've been so disobedient because you of all people should have known and obeyed. This is, brothers and sisters, this is why he comes to his own house first. This is why it comes to the Jews and to the Christians. One is coming to God's people. One is coming to Jesus's. Okay, that's the way you can look at it. That's why it's coming to Jerusalem, to the Jews, and why it's coming to the church. That's why there's seven years for the final wake-up call for the church, and then seven years for Judah or Jacob's trouble as well. Okay, here it is right here. We know that he's going to come again, the Syrian. But when the Syrian comes again, it's at the end of the story. You see, at the end of the story, at the end of 13 years, what's going to happen? The Lord returns. And then what? Watch this. Let's go back into Zechariah. Look at Zechariah chapter 14. <clears throat> the Lord has returned feet down on Mount of Olives. But there's still going to be an army that's going to try and come against them. Okay? This is the second battle. This is that attack, but what's going to happen? The Jews are also going to be involved with helping fight against them. Okay? It's not just uh, it's not just the Lord's going to do this. The Jews are going to be involved. There's going to be some involved with fighting against them. Okay? That's what it's talking about in here as well. And you see this because what happens is the Jews then are a small number of people, but then the Syrians they end up with a great army at the end. And so you've got a small company in the beginning. God uses them to remove the Jews. Then at the end, he comes again. And when they come again, they come with a great army. We talked about in the previous video. They come with a great army. And this time the Lord destroys them because they said he is a God of the hills, but not a God of the valleys. And that's the valley. That's that whole blood so high to the girdle you see that's at the end right to the horse's bridle that is the valley battle at the end okay guys it's all there it's everything is there it's all in order but nobody's talking about this destruction that will remove them from jerusalem and do you know why because just like i told you guys earlier it goes back to the beginning it goes back to that playlist when I said the reason is the whole world of church has been taught from Matthew. And when the whole world of church has been taught from the gospel of Matthew, you don't see the first seven years. You only see what's coming for Jacob, which is Matthew. It's like you're at the very end of the book of Mark. The 144,000 sealed, the rapture of the church, and then Matthew, Jacob's trouble. This is why they've missed these things. They don't understand that the Jews are going to be removed for seven years. And during that removal of seven years, it's going to be the tribulation of seals against the church, which is also going to be against the world. Okay? So let me show you some of this, some more of this in relation to the 50. So, like I said, many people see it in different ways. And the easiest way was always, oh, it's 40 days and then 10. Well, it doesn't really line up with scripture because there's no way they were waiting in the upper room in Jerusalem for 10 days. Okay, no way. It makes no sense. So here's what we ended up coming to, to understand. It says, for yet seven days will I cause it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. And this is in uh, Genesis 7. And then in verse 10, and it came to pass after seven days that the flood waters were upon the earth. So what's after seven days mean? means the eighth day. It means the eighth day. How long were the flood waters upon the earth? Okay? How long were the flood waters upon the earth? We all know the story. We know the story is the waters were upon the earth for 40 days. Okay? So for yet seven days, I'm going to cause it to be rain upon the earth for 40. So seven, so start at the eighth day, then 40 days, 
So that gives you 48 days, right? And then you have the raven go out. I would say like the 49th day. And then the dove goes out the 50th day. The dove is here, does its thing for one day, and then the dove leaves. And when the dove leaves, boom, the tribulation begins. Day one of the 14 years. Here it's the 14 days. It's the 14 years is the type and shadow. So we see after we see after seven, so the eighth day, we have 40 days. And then what is more of speculation is that this is one day and this is the next day. But it kind of lines up. I'm going to show you as we go in more into scripture with this. So here's what I see. Resurrection day. The bride has gone to her seven-day wedding, just like Leah. We all know this story. We've shared it many times. Right? He works for Leah and Rachel. Those, those first seven days flew by. Right? Those first seven years, they flew by as days. This is, this is what we're coming to the end to right now. And then he says, boom, give me my wife, man. I want my wife. And he has to, well, what? He has to what? He ends up getting Leah unbeknownst to him. But there's a seven-day feast. It's a seven-day wedding. This is that wedding we've been talking about and understanding that the bride is going to be a part of. This is the Gentile bride gone, and it's going to be the wedding. This is why we see in Genesis chapter 7 that it said for yet seven days and then after seven days. Okay? What is that seven day? What's the type and shadow of that seven day? It's the wedding. Fulfill her week. It is the Gentile wedding week. It is why also in Luke chapter 9, we've shared this many times. It's also why in Luke chapter 9, verse 28, it says, And it came to pass about in eight days. You see, it came to pass about in eight days after these sayings. So something happened eight days after something else. So this is taking place about eight days after a group. There were some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. This is the escape of the bride of Christ. And this is now about eight days later. So it means two things. It's telling us about eight days in here after the escape of the bride, meaning he's going to return after the seven from the wedding. But it also means almost the eighth year in the big picture of the 21 years. Okay, so it's got a dual fulfillment in it. But we had another piece. We said, okay, well, we can see there's this wedding. We can see there's these connections. We go to Luke chapter 12 and he tells them, you know, and you yourselves, gird yourselves like, like uh, and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. So again, he goes in and when I knock, that you would open immediately. And if you do, I'll sit down and eat with you. We've covered this a number of times. And second watch and third watch. The second watch relates to when he comes at the end of seals. The third watch is relating to when he comes at the end of trumpets. We've shared this many times. This is the first watch. And so what is he telling them? When I return from the wedding. So again, after seven days, for yet seven days, and then after seven days, meaning the eighth day. Then we have about an eight days when he returns from a group that has already been taken to the kingdom of God. Then we have him say, when I return from the wedding, we know the wedding is seven days. So over and over and over and over again, we have this. So then we say, or then we found just a few months ago, this was awesome. This was, this was what sealed the deal. And here it was. We found the scripture where Jesus appears unto 10 of the 11 apostles that were left. And because uh, Timothy or Thomas wasn't there, right? Doubting Thomas wasn't there. And when Jesus comes to them, we're told, first of all, in John chapter 20, verse 19, then the same day at evening, okay, when the doors were shut, he breathes on these 10. So this group doesn't have to wait the 50 days to receive the Holy Ghost. This group got the Holy Ghost immediately, even while he was gone for when he's going to then leave for the wedding. How do we know this? 
because then Thomas comes in and he says, well, I'm not going to believe till I could see him too, till I could touch him and put my hands through and all these things. Don't you think Thomas would have gone out to find Jesus? He would have been walking around somewhere for eight days and could have just run up to him and gone to see him. Why didn't he? Because Jesus was gone. It says, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Jesus came and showed up to them and so forth. This eight days is the eight days we'd been looking for. So do you understand what's going on here? It's We find out that he tells, um, he tells Mary Magdalene, uh, was it, uh, 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 Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but I go, uh, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. Okay? So she had to go and tell the brethren, which means Christ, when we go into Luke 24, Christ was there. He's walking with the two. He must have left. Because when Mary saw him, he she couldn't touch him, and she had to go tell the brethren that he was going to the Father. Which means it's not as cut and dry as we've been shown all our lives. That it's 40 days from resurrection and then 10 more days. That's just the that's just the the the, the children book story. The truth is, when you reveal the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to and the timelines within these gospels you get the greater picture. What happened is he resurrected. Don't touch me. I got to go to my father, but go and tell the guys I'm coming. So what happens? He went up. He went to be with the father. And he came back maybe, I don't know, an hour later, couple, three hours, who knows exactly, but it was the same day. Okay? And he's walking with those two in Luke 24. And we see here, it says, then the same day at evening on the first day of the week. He comes into the tent and he breathes on them and gives them that power. But then he leaves again. You see, now he's gone because Thomas can't do anything. Thomas can't see him. This leaving is what we get in Luke chapter 24. You see, in Luke chapter 24, they see him. He tells them these things. And then you see this ascension, we're told. It said, and he was carried up into heaven. Everybody believes this is the 40 days, the end of the 40 days. It's not. This is the end of resurrection day. This is the end of resurrection day. So he leaves at the end of resurrection day for the second time. Seen a Mary Magdalene, goes up, comes back, visits with the guys, stays there until evening, leaves again. And how long is now? So he was there during resurrection day, come and gone, and then came again, still resurrection day. Then he leaves. He's carried up, just like we've been saying, the bride is carried up. He's carried up, and then this is when John tells us he comes back after eight days. When he comes back after eight days, what do you think that is? It's the same story we've been talking about with Genesis and, and after 7, it, it's the same as Luke chapter 9. Well, why did he come back again after eight days? It's the wedding. He was gone for the wedding. Okay, now he's there. He's returned from the wedding, just like he said in Luke chapter 12. You, like men, waiting for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. This is when... The Lord God began his 40 days. Now you can start to see this imagery that we see in Genesis 7 and 8. When it said for yet seven days. And then after seven days. Okay. For yet seven days. Then I'll cause it to rain 40 days. And then after four, after seven days. This is that wedding week, brothers and sisters. This is the beginning of the count. Of the 50, the seven days here are included. When the seven days are over, the flood begins. The flood begins. And we know it's going to be for 40 days. Well, guess what? Want me to prove this out to you much more clearly? 
Let's go back into Luke 17. Luke 17 makes it so crystal clear for us. You guys remember this? These guys demand, first of all, it's the Pharisees' demand of them. And he says they wouldn't see it. Uh, then he's talking to his disciples. They're looking for one of the days, meaning the first of the days of the Son of Man. And they're told they won't see it. See, his disciples won't see it. It's for the Gentile bride of Christ. They're going to see it. But he tells them, he says, it's going to be as lightning from one end unto the other. So they're not talking about something now. He's giving them prophecy for what's to come. So he tells them what it's going to be like at his day. The end, the end of the sixth trumpet when he returns as lightning from one end unto the other. And then he says, but first. He will suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. This is the beginning of the understanding of his 40 days. And then he says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did drink, they marry, and their wives until the flood came and destroyed them all. What's he talking about? He's talking about him being here after seven days, being here for the 40 days. And in that 40 days, it's going to be chaos. Do you understand, guys? It's going to be chaos. Tens of millions of people will have vanished. They're talking about all this alien stuff and alien information being released and, and all these things so that they could use it to cover up the Lord taking out a people for himself. That'll be tens of millions of people. It's only the bride of Christ. It's only 10% of the church, the ready portion, all right? The first fruits of the wheat harvest, okay? The first fruits, the 10% of the wheat that was ready, that's given to the Lord. You see, he's telling here that he's coming for 40 days and those 40 days are gonna be in the midst of chaos, just like the 40 days were during Noah's time. He's not talking about the entirety of the time. He's not saying the whole time as Noah, because Noah's story with the ark is a one-year story. This story in Luke 17, he's only relating to the 40 days. Okay? He's only relating the 40-day portion. Okay? The days of the Son of Man will be until the days they got into the ark and destroyed them all. He's only speaking the 40 days. We've revealed this before, right? We showed how the Muslims, even they believe that there's a guy coming for 40 days first. They believe he's the Antichrist for Christians, but it's really going to be the Son of Man. This is why he's going to be rejected. So now, when these 40 days are over, if they began after eight days, well, what happens? We've now got. Watch this. We've now got Resurrection Day. 50 days begin. But it's the wedding, right? So you've got the wedding taking place. The Lord returns at the eighth day. He's here for 40 days. When the 40 days are over, it's right in here. And then what happens? You have the raven go out. And then the dove. When the dove leaves and the 50 days are over, the 14 years begin with the destruction of Jerusalem on the actual day of all reckonings that have come against them, which is the ninth of of the literal revelation of what this ministry has been trying to track and follow for three years when they would not observe the fasting and mourning of the fifth month. Brothers and sisters, I hope you see it. So what are we looking at? Revel uh, 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 escape. Resurrection day. The seven-day wedding. Him returning after the eighth day. Forty days of the Son of Man then. Followed by him leaving the raven going out, 
and the Holy Ghost being poured out at that final 50th day anointing. You see, now it starts to line up. Now we can see why when we go into Acts chapter 1, in Acts chapter 1, it's talking about um, when they were there, they saw him by many infallible proofs being seen of him by 40 days, speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God and his ascension. Therefore, they came together. And what happens? He's taken up. And then it says they return unto Jerusalem, which we know is a Sabbath day journey. So it wasn't very far. And they met up with everybody that was there in the upper room. They didn't all hang out. They were told to wait there not many days. You see, not many days. Well, 10 days is a long time to be waiting. Okay. 10 days would be a long time to be waiting. So not many days being two days, that makes a lot more sense. And we've covered that before as well. So all of this to say, we get it. We get this count now. It's the ox. The revelation is the ox. And it's the ox that reveals the actual count to the start of the 14 years. This is... This is stuff, guys. You see, what ends up happening? What's going to happen during these 40 days or during this portion of time of 50 days? Let's not forget what uh, what Acts talks about. You see, we know there's this stone's throw that's coming, right? We've talked about the stone's throw a lot lately. But we can't forget, we have this revelation of the open books in Psalms 18, 118, is before the 14 years starts, you see? This is going to be taking place in that 50-day window. Okay? There is major destruction that is coming. And most people believe that this destruction is going to be more damaging on the western side of the world, and in particular, a focus in America, than most of the rest of the world. Okay? And I believe it lines up, too, because if Jerusalem is about to be removed, I believe America is going to be quite decimated as well, right near the start. Because judgment first comes to the house of God. So it comes to Jerusalem and it comes to America. One which is for God's place, one which is where the, the, the true church, you can say, or the real establishment and where it goes out throughout the earth with America, not Rome. Okay? That this is where it's coming to. So there is massive, massive devastation that follows. Okay? Let me show you something now that uh, one of our sisters shared. Our sister down in Jamaica was sharing with me. You know, she says, where can we see maybe in Song of Solomon uh, in relation to what she thought could relate to the escape? Now watch this. As we start to wind this down here. In Song of Solomon, she brought it to okay, the beloved wife and she brought it to right here. She says in verse 10, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, verse 10. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Okay? To pass, take, so on and so forth, to walk away. And then she said, For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Okay? Here it is. And the rain is over and gone. So we kept thinking of these things like early spring. Well, of course, we had to think of these things in early spring because that's where the equinox was. That's where resurrection was. You see, I've been saying this since the beginning for months and months now. We haven't changed. Nothing of the revelation has changed when we keep saying that it's at resurrection day. We just needed the correct understanding of which resurrection count is the Lord counting from? He's not counting from the from Pisces where we are now. He's not counting from Aries where it was with Christ. He's counting to where it is now, which is in the bull, right? Or where it was in the beginning. So winter is past and the rain has gone over. So this sounds later spring, doesn't it? Well, I decided to look into the word rain. A shower, rain, you know, this is why a program like ESORT is so awesome because you got the Strong's Concordance at your fingertips. So I looked at the word rain and I said, okay, it comes from a root word and it means to shower violently. 
So this started again to make me think, see, if, if rain has gone over, but it's bringing us to the root word of this rain, it sounds like some some devastating type rain shower, some devastating type of destruction with this type of violent shower, okay? Well, when you see something like this, something that shows up once or just a handful of times, it really can tell you quite a bit if you go look into it. So I decided to go look into it, of course, as I always do. And it brought me to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 22. Check this out. Here it is right here. Jeremiah 14, verse 22. Let's go into Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. And look into this connection. See, famine, sword, and pestilence is the breakdown of what's taking place here. It says, starting in verse 12. When they fast, I will, no, I will not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by famine and by pestilence. There you go. This is the beginning of tribulation. You, you know how full the scriptures are? How many places we've gone into scripture to see a, a disobedience for the Jews and for over Jerusalem? How many times the Lord has come and just destroyed them for their disobedience? That time is great that it's coming to an end. They're going to have to endure it again. But once this time is over, it's over. This is the beginning of the end of days. The story is coming to an end. And this final end is two sets of seven. And when it's over, it is hallelujah, jubilee and jubilation for them, for their promised land, and their millennial reign of peace with the Lord. But not yet. Because they've been disobedient, you see? Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold the prophets say unto them, You shall not see the sword. Do you remember that? Weren't we just, weren't we just sharing that? You shall not see the, Lord, the sword. See? I'm not saying these guys are prophets. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is they don't understand that the sword is coming upon Jerusalem. Okay? All the prophets, nobody's talking about an utter destruction of Jerusalem and the Jews being, being sent all over the place. I don't know anybody that's talking like us. I'm sure there's some, but I don't know anybody that's saying, it's time to get out, Jews. How many of them are even going to listen to the Son of Man when he's here for 40 days, warning them to get out, warning them to wake up? See, ah, Lord God, behold, the prophet say unto them, you shall not see the sword, neither shall you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. See, they think they're going to get peace. They think this attack that's coming and that's starting to settle down, that these guys are going to get peace next. It's not what's coming. It's the sword. Then said the Lord unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination of a thing not and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. Yikes. Yikes. You see, all of this is relating to that time. All of this relating to that time. Okay? Famine and destruction is coming. And this connection to the time frame is this word, with a violent rain. So as I continue to see where this was going to lead, I come into chapter 15. Watch this. Coming into chapter 15, I'm going to start in verse, uh, in verse 8. Watch this. Starting in verse 8. 
Their widows are increased to me above the sands of the sea. Well, of course, right? All the men of war, destruction is coming, uh, has come. I have brought upon them against the mother of young men a spoiler. Okay, check this out. A spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. This is packed with stuff. Verse 9, she that hath borne seven, right? She have borne the seven churches, guys, from Jerusalem, right? She hath given up the ghost. So after the spoiler, the ghost will shortly be given up. Her son is gone down while it is yet day. Whoa, man, there's a whole bunch here. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord God. This spoiler, you want a confirmation for this time frame? This spoiler is the same spoiler found in Jeremiah chapter 4. You guys remember how many times we've gone to Jeremiah chapter 4 over the years? Okay. The lion has come up from the thicket. This is Assad. This is Assyria when he comes for that attack. This is literally what we've been teaching. And here we saw that it's Assad, the king of the north, that's bringing that destruction. Okay. And the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. Okay. I believe that's going to be Russia. This is when the war really breaks out, World War III. Then we see, then said, then said I, ah, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem saying you shall have peace. Well, that's what, that's what this said over here in, in Jeremiah 14. They think they're going to have peace. These, these prophets are telling them, ah, no, peace is coming next. Nobody's going to destroy you guys. Jerusalem, your weaponry, it's too, it's too powerful. All right, everybody's saying, no, peace is going to come next. But in that peace, what do we know comes? We know they're not really getting the peace. We know it's not really peace. How many times have we shared that? Second Chronicles 36. This peace they think they're coming, they think that's coming, is directly connected to their failure of Sabbaths of the 70 years. And it says, of, see, it even says Jeremiah right here. In 2 Chronicles 36, 21, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as long as she lay desolate, she keepeth Sabbath to fulfill the 70 years. Okay, so what's going to happen? The attack is going to happen, but the king of Persia is going to stand up. Okay, whoever this modern day Cyrus is going to be, he's going to make this declaration of peace. And when he makes this declaration of peace, boom, that is going to be the attack on Jerusalem that will follow that declaration that will then cause them to be removed from the land for seven years during seals. You see this? For the 70 years, it's got to now enjoy her Sabbaths, just like Jeremiah said. This is exactly what we're talking about. Okay, they think this peace is coming. It's no peace that's coming to them. Okay, it's a, it's the destruction. It's the spoiler coming upon them, just like Jeremiah four is saying. Okay, ah, you think peace is coming, but the sword is coming. The Lord said. Okay, who's bringing this sword? Verse thirteen of Jeremiah chapter four. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horse is swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. Who spoils? The spoiler. Okay. Uh, where else is it? Verse 20. Destruction upon destruction is cried. The, uh, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtains in a moment. Uh, does that sound familiar? Here he is right here. 
Here it is right here telling us the exact same story. In chapter 15 of Jeremiah, verse 8. The spoiler coming and destruction happening suddenly. Okay? And this fall that's coming upon them suddenly, are you ready for this? It's from terrors. Okay? And terrors upon the city. This word terror can mean terror or trouble. It's used four times. Okay? It's only used four times. And you saw what we just read a moment ago, right? We just read this a moment ago in 2 Chronicles 36, right? For the she must enjoy her Sabbaths for the 70 years. Let the, let the land rest, just like Jeremiah had said, okay? Well, now here we are in Jeremiah, and it's telling us that the word that we were just looking at, this word for terrors, connected directly to the time frame of this attack at the end of 50 days. This is what we're talking about. This is the end of 50 days or that time frame at the end of 50 days, like the 49th, 50th day time frame. Watch this. And terrors upon the city. Okay, there it is. 928, 928 used four times. Look where it's used. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 16. What do you think the chances are that this word for terrors, by the way, did you see the word terrors? There's terror and there's terrors. So Jeremiah 15 connected to Leviticus 26. These two are trouble. Okay. Terror and terrors. The only two places in the Old Testament. And it's in Leviticus 26 verse 16. Do you know why that's so important? Because how many times have we been teaching from this? What is it called? For their disobedience. Punishment for disobedience. I also will do this unto you. I, I will even appoint over you terror. Consumption and the burning ague shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it. Do you remember what happens? Remember I was saying how it's directly connected to what he was saying in uh, 2 Chronicles 36 that Jeremiah said that the land had to take its rest and because of it, this destruction was going to come upon them. See, if you walk contrary unto me, the Lord God said, unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. And I will send also wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. If you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I will walk. Con then I will also walk contrary unto you, and I will punish you yet seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant, and when you are gathered together within your cities. I will send the pestilence among you and you shall be delivered into your enemy's hands. Chastise you seven times. You remember all of this? Verse 33 of Leviticus 26. And I will scatter you among the heathen and I will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then, here it comes, then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, ah, this is what we were just reading in 2 Chronicles 36, directly connected to what we were reading in Jeremiah 14 and 15. As long as it lieth desolate, and you be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. For as long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when you dwelt upon it. You see what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters? This is it. The spoiler is coming. He's going to come upon them at noonday, suddenly, and it's going to bring absolute terrors. Do you follow this? See how the spoiler comes at noonday? And then it says, she hath given up the ghost. Well, consider the timing of what we're talking about. What did I what was I just explaining in relation to Genesis where did I put it in relation to Genesis chapter 8 okay 
when the 40 days of the Son of Man come to an end, which would be the 48 days, the 49th would be the raven, and the 50th the dove. So it goes raven, antichrist spirit, and then dove at the 50th day. Well, what are we seeing here? The antichrist spirit, the spoiler coming at noonday. And sudden destruction and terror is coming upon them. And she gives up the ghost. This is directly connecting us to Gen uh, to Revelation chapter 6. See? Look what ends up happening at the second... Where is it? And I heard the second seal. And Revelation 6 verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And there was power given unto him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth this is the time see and great sword given this is when it's going to become nation against nation kingdom against kingdom people against people all of it guys all of these things are in order this is why i keep saying we've understood we have understood we just didn't know where the where this timing was directly connected to I believe with all my heart we do now. Okay? We've been watching this thing take place for the last year and a bit with uh with the coronavirus. Okay? We had we had a count in our in our revelation that began it. So we see these things. We had a video given to us back at that same time in the 10th of to the 11th of March that told us that this virus was going to become a pandemic and go across the earth. That there would then be an attack on Israel with, with Iran and it would be a short-lived attack. We know that that short-lived attack is going to bring about this peace and safety by the modern-day Cyrus. And when this attack by the modern-day, uh, uh, this attack takes place and Cyrus declares it, boom, Syria will have been surrounding already and Jerusalem will be destroyed. All of this will take place at that Antichrist spirit, that that. Ishmael spirit, that, that affliction that I've heard of you because of their crying for a child, right? It's at the beginning and he's at the end. And here he is right here. Jeremiah 15, 10, as I finish up. Woe is me, my mother, that thou has borne a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. Who is this man of strife and this man of contention we've been talking about? Who brings strife and pain and trouble and is a man relating to affliction, a wild man in his hand against everybody? Ishmael. Who is the type and shadow? Who is this Ishmael? The raven. The raven is what? Dusky hue. Because it's the tanned flesh. It's the Arab. You see? Guys, we're understanding it. We're understanding it was just a matter of where. Okay? Look at this, verse 11. Back in Jeremiah 15, as I end it. The Lord said, verily, it shall be well with the remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well uh, in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. It's all there. Every time. You see, this was this came about from, from our sister, uh, one of our sisters in Jamaica, who, who shared this connection to the Song of Solomon. And what did we show earlier in relation to 717? One relates to the bride of Christ and one relates to the rapture. One is pre-trib, one is at the end of seals. And 717 being the 50th day, the Holy Ghost. Guys, <laughs> I, I often wonder, you know, what more am I going to share, Lord? What more can I possibly share to, to, to bring the understanding? You see, it's, it's not so much what more can I share anymore. It's how can we reach more? How can we reach more and more people? The book has, has started to do a great job. And you guys sharing the book and, and the links to the free book and so forth. 
we just we just got to keep doing our best to reach out to reach to more and more and more people and i pray you guys can help that we can really hammer it down to uh this brother dean combs as well or coombs that if we reach him we can maybe help reach even more people through him as well that we can get this going really really quick because brothers and sisters this is where we're at this is where we're at as i'm doing this right now it's the 27 uh the 21st of may i believe that we're i still believe that stone's throw brothers and sisters right in this time frame it might be right up to the time that we go but in this time frame here and i believe this is the escape of the bride i believe we've understood it the count is in the the years are are given the understanding from his birth the understanding of Psalms 90 and 10, seals and trumpets, the wedding, the returning from the wedding, when he returns feet down in 34 to fulfill that final year to the millennium reign beginning in 35. All of it correlated to scripture. Every last piece. See, I even got it down here. Around halfway through the seventh year, around the fall of 2027, the rapture. Just like the guy was showing when they're gathered in the sheepfold with the crowd. All right, brothers and sisters. So awesome. So exciting. I just, I don't know what to say except uh, just keep praying, keep watching, keep lifting each other up. All right. Keep drawing closer. Keep seeking him in scripture until. And. Prayerfully, on Sunday morning, we will do, or Sunday morning, you know, to noon, uh, we will do a live show. So anybody in the forum or anybody that's listening wants to join, just uh, be paying attention for that as well. And uh, we can send you the link or you can join the forum uh, from the website and join in from there. All right, guys. I'm so looking forward to meeting you guys very, very soon. And remember, in the kingdom of God, sit at the back row, wait for a call to come forward, right? You guys remember that? I love you guys. God bless you. Bye for now.